act like. This is what everybody was like before us. This is what I am. Welcome back to Lisa the Painful RPG. I'm the voice of Doug. Okay, let's play Lisa. So, at this point, we only have one task left for us to do before we go find Buddy. But we also have some optional stuff we could explore that we're going to take care of this episode. We've already gotten what we needed from Winter Wonderland here. Uh, we got uh, Buffalo Van Dyke and his toolbox. But there's a couple of other things here we can check out first. Hey Brad, do you want to see my new Cronenberg cosplay? No, Peter. For the last time. It hasn't come up that much, and I'm sure I've explained it previously, but the mutants in the third act of the game have higher chances to insta-kill your party members, but we really haven't seen it all that much. And I'm honestly not... Like, saves coming when, when things go wrong. There was that one time during the Terry fight I did for, you know, as a joke. But since then, I haven't seen any of these attacks. Brad got hit by one, which which just knocks him out. The game just doesn't end there. But it's safe to say that these guys are a lot more unpredictably dangerous in the third act. So, what's at the top of Winter Wonderland Mountain? That is a lot of bodies. That's a- oh! Oh, hey! Dude, you need some help? Hang on, hang on. We got you. Uh... Okay, we did just pick up some water. And, uh, we can't throw the good water, so we'll just throw the dirty water, because, what, like, you don't care, right? You, you'll be thankful regardless. Oh. Huh. Alright, well, I got another idea. Hang on. Crisp, you can finally make use of your wet cutter ability. Do it. Too much cut, not enough wet. Okay. Good lesson. Now we know. So... Why? If you've been paying attention, you might have an idea of 
why all these bodies are here. I believe the first time we met Rando, the only time we met Rando, uh, they were carrying away a truckload of bodies. And while it's not explicitly stated, I kind of assume it means that they're aware of the mutant problem and are trying to preempt it by collecting all the dead bodies and burning them. That one guy was just a bit less dead than everyone else. It's not a bad plan. There was only one mutant up there, so it's probably working, but... Not a job I would want. That leaves the question, does death actually matter if you're going to mutate? It's worth thinking about. Well, that was a very sobering discovery, and quite frankly, I'm, I'm tired of this shit. We're gonna go on a real vacation. Now, I know, I know I've said that twice before. Uh, there was that time when I pretended the island full of garbage was a nice beach island paradise. And then there was Jim Sterling Island, where... I, let's not talk about that, but... Here it is, the map to Resort Island. A real resort for a real vacation. Finally. Sand feels nice. I'm glad everyone got over their poison at the exact time, exact same time. All right, we're here. Let's go check in. No one at the front desk. I mean, this place is pretty quiet, so I guess they don't get a whole lot of uh, visitors anymore. Maybe we could find the concierge. See if they have any, like, massage services. My back is killing me. Excuse me, sir? Uh, yeah, do you know where the spa is? I'm a bit lost. No? Okay. Really unusual decor in this hotel. I've never seen... I've never really seen a blood splatter theme in a hotel. It's very interesting. A little unnerving, but... but different. Your footsteps make a different noise over this panel because there is a hidden switch here. There's actually four of them that we're gonna go find. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm looking for the spa. Can you... no? No? Alright, well... These guys are all very out of it. And 
There's something back here, but let's not go there yet. Oh! Excuse me, sorry. So, I believe if we have hit four switches, we can access... this. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> and why there is a gigantic cacophony accompanying it. And the game doesn't know what it is either. A mutant and more dead guys in suits and ties and... Okay, now let's check out this place. Oh, this is where the party is. Awesome. Excuse me. Excuse me, I just wanna try and get to the bar. Just, uh... What? What is that? Well, I feel really refreshed after our... After our vacation. And I think it's time to go back to adventuring. So, one plot item left to acquire, and one character left to use. So, let's put Buffalo Van Dyke on our team. I think he's a good character, but nothing really special. He does good single target damage and can occasionally trip things. And as far as I know, that's about it. Unless you... Unless he's got some other abilities that he gets after you level him up a bunch. But it's kind of the end of the game. Not a whole lot of incentive to level up. And we're going to dress Buffalo in Hawk Hollywood's flag. Because why not? I think Buffalo deserves it more than Hawk. For sure. Oh, there's something in this cave, all right. And it's a dojo. The final dojo. The ultimate challenge. Somehow, this is more painful than the challenge where we jumped off a cliff onto our face 30 times.
That's right. We are worthy. The final scroll is pretty significant. The Doomsday style scroll increases all stats by 10. So, yeah, let's give that to Brad and make him more invincible. All right. Thanks, Sensei. We'll see you around. We're just gonna. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, we got this far. Might as well, you know. Yep. Alright. Thanks for that. Cool. Onward. Or downward. Hey, there's two unique pieces of equipment. I kind of forget what... <laughs> it was a shawl and a shirt. It's kind of hard to tell who can use it. Okay, well, Grandma Shawl has excellent defense. And special defense. Oh, right. I forgot to show off the Dandy Boy gun, which is pretty great. I think it might be the best submachine gun in the game. There's kind of a lot of them, so it's hard to tell. Okay, I finally find someone who can equip Grandpa's shirt. It's Beastborn. It has good defense, apparently. Cool. Well, there's a lot of tree stumps around here, but that's not going to give us the wood we need. We still need some lumber to finish our boat. Blood Coyote, I don't know how you snuck up on us like that, but that's impressive. Uh, unfortunately, that will not save you from the power of football. <laughs> Buffalo is a great patriot. Yeah, okay, I we really don't have time for your superstitious nonsense. Yeah, the 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 ghost of the Brad who really needs a fucking tree to cut down, uh, is pissed off that you're in his way. There, how do you like that? I can do folklore too. Okay, now we have to fight Blood Mountain. These guys overall aren't terribly difficult.
I don't really have a whole lot to say about this area. It's kind of pretty, but uh, kind of forgettable, too. It's really just a small gauntlet of fairly easy fights. At this point in the game, this feels like something we should have ran into, I don't know, part two of the game? I do like Buffalo's slow motion corkscrew attack, while the message on the top of the screen tells you that Buffalo is a great patriot. There's a tree. All right, let's go get some wood. What's up, dude? What makes you think I care if it's the last one? All right, I need this tree. It doesn't matter. Nice to hear a men's hair club one more time. Near the original version. But, uh, Bloodiest Wolf is not terribly powerful. At least, I don't think we really get to see him demonstrate if he has any strength at all. Uh, he seems to just miss all of his attacks, or not even get a chance to do them. Like I said, at this point in the game, we are kinda unstoppable. You dumbass. This is my story, okay? Your story's over, because you're dead. And this tree is mine. Fucking environmentalists. It's the apocalypse. Stop caring about the trees. They're meant to be used. That's right. Fuck your ecosystem, fuck your trees, and fuck your culture. So, only a couple of things left to show off. But, uh, one of them involves the Devil's Machine, which we checked out but were unable to access last time. But you might remember that when we went to the bathhouse, we found a uh, key ring with the name Mike on it. And, yep, it belongs to this. So, what's inside this thing? No. Oh. Hey, we found your keys! You left them at that, uh, Yakuza bathhouse. 
I thought you might want them back. What? What? Satan? It was you all along. I should have known. Probably because it was called the Devil's Machine, and that's usually not literal. Well, either way, this is... I guess you could consider this the super boss, omega weapon kind of thing of the game. Uh, Satan is pretty powerful and has very... And has probably the highest chance of, of insta-killing somebody. Uh, so, you don't want him to hit you at all. We want him as locked down as possible. So... We're just going to go at this full force and see what happens. Yeah, oil flame combo, extremely useful on Satan. And he can take quite a few of those attacks as well. He has a ton of HP. Fortunately, we have made Satan cry, so he's having trouble hitting us. This will hopefully give us time to do the 100,000 damage we need to do in order to kill him. I don't actually know how much HP he has. It's just a lot. That's all you need to know. Don't hold anything back, because if he does land a single hit on you, it could take out one of your party members, and then this will be a lot harder. We are going to use our completely broken debuff on him and see if that helps. Can we make Satan completely harmless like we did to some other enemies? Nice. Jesus Christ! Oh no! You can cause depression by poking someone's pressure points? That's horrible. Why would you do that? Satan, what the fuck? Dude, I don't have health care. Do you know how much a prescription of joy costs? Last time I had to give both of my pinky fingers up to my dealer. HMOs are fucking bullshit. Okay, so despite not taking, uh, any damage from Satan at all, we're kind of wearing ourselves out. This is, this is to be expected in a fight this long. But that's all he's got. I kind of made that look a little easy. That's what happens when you're just very good at this game. Also, Carp learned FIFA River 3, so now he's going to attack even more times. 
Ten four, good buddy. Mike's belt buckle is yet another excellent piece of equipment. That's going to go on Brad. Brad's pants are going to be motherfucking secure as fuck. Well, that was the last thing I wanted to show off before we go look for Buddy. We'll uh, take a quick rest, and then... Oh, wait, what's this? Oh, come on! Who? Oh, no, Birdie! No! Alright, well, Buddy can wait. We have to go take care of this. Okay, this isn't quite the same dream team without Birdie, but Nern's still a pretty good substitute. Yeah, I remember seeing a bunch of guys with motorcycles, so... Let's go check that place out again. Oh! Someone got to them first. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Fever River, not incredible when you withdraw. But still does damage, which is kind of different, considering most other addicts will just do nothing. Okay. Let's go save Birdie. Yes, it is. Now, way back in Act 2, I missed a piece of armor in the Nice Homes area, which everyone saw fit to tell me that I missed, because it was very important. So, here I am getting the lab coat. There I am looking at the stats of the lab coat. And there I am selling the lab coat, fuck you. Right, well now that that's done... We have our dream team, we have our boat components, we have all the items we could need. Hey, Sticky. We left you alive, so...
Goodbye, Sticky. There's nothing else in our way. Tardy, you already told us all this. Tardy, please. We we have we have all of those things. Yes. This is the point of no return. We are we are prepared. Brad offers to do all the work with Tardy and just let our party rest so they're at full strength. never really been addressed, but how much does Brad really trust everyone? I think this should give you an answer. So, bye guys. Sorry. Wait, there's the boat, but... Tardy, I think you misunderstood why you're here. I don't think so. Yeah, great job. Useless fuck. There's a lot of garbage on this island. Should probably clean it up if we're gonna just live the rest of our lives here with Buddy. Our home is going to be clean, at least. I'd like to pause here for a brief second. This this situation right here is probably the worst thing that Brad could envision. Here we have his abusive father in the same room with his adopted daughter, who he spent her entire life trying to keep her away from harm and, well, any bad influence at all. <laughs> Brad has pretty good reason to want to kill Marty, but Buddy is right there, and she doesn't know what he's been through. So maybe we'll try and do the right thing. <laughs> 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 
Or at least, he tries. You see, the game gives us a decision, but... It's almost like a cruel joke, because... We're not in control of Brad anymore. What experience could you possibly gain from this situation? The end is coming. Thank <laughs> you.